And uh, these are sugar snap peas. And I'm going to give a little how we do it. Uh, we soak them, the peas, how many were to use overnight. So they've been almost 24 hours in distilled water. We don't use tap water, we use distilled water. Let them soak overnight to get soft. Pre soaking the seeds. That way they'll sprout fast, a lot faster. And we also use this pea and bean boosters, an inoculate that we, what we do is we, I pour the water out and I'll pour this stuff in. Um, usually you can buy this right where this, you buy the, the seeds at. You'll pour the, you pour this in and mix it around with the, um, with the pea seeds and that will help um, these um, uh, grow better and sprout. you you get more um, b better yields. And I got the name covered up here but it doesn't matter. Um, any, any inoculate you can get. So, but I'll go out there now and we'll start planting. Okay, as you can see, I added the inoculant now. I uh, bought one of these one of these containers for, I don't know how many ounces they are, but they're just regular. It claims it treats 40-foot 40, 40 roll, and um, um, I just poured about a half bag in it, because I have extra bags too, so I'm not worried. But you let them in there, you pour all the water out that I had, you just roll them around, let, them, let that stuff stick to them. And then when you put them in the ground, then you'll pour some more of this stuff inside the um, inside the hole. And uh, I'm assuming you have your pea beds ready and everything else. I'll come to that later. But right now, like that inoculant is on, and I'm getting ready to plant them. Well, here we go. Hope the camera's set up just right, and I hope I'm not shadowing enough. But by the way, these are sugar snap peas, the only ones we really grow. You can eat the pods. You can eat them when they're full. When you can eat them with just just the pods. Um, use them for stir fries, do whatever you want with them, but they're they're multi multi uses. You can wait till they're full. The, the peas are big like that to eat them, and uh, you do all kinds of things with them. So uh, that's why we grow them. And uh, we we'll use a square foot method, of course. That's the only way we garden here is square foot gardening. And I'm going to put dividers in. I showed you in my other videos about the little dividers we made. We take window blinds. People throw these window blinds things away. The ones when they make their, they buy them vinyl window blinds for their their house, and and they take some of these off because they don't want the big, you know, they want to shorten them up. Well, I take them, I keep them, and I cut them up and use them for things. I use them for uh, plant labels. They sell them packs of what, 50 in the store for two, three bucks. I mean, you can make window blinds. I got hundreds of them in the thing there. I'll never run out of them. But this I use the divider. I showed you before, so I divide every. I got little marks on here from make the one foot because these are one foot by four foot boxes and uh, I got them we drew lines on them but the lines disappear believe it or not but they do the even the pencil lines disappear after a while but what we do is basically I'm not going to show you totally we just lay these down like this in here and um, bend it a little bit so it fits better and we this this divides it up for us and did we just do it just basically for for aesthetic value because we know already how to do it and the peas will be eight per um, two four six eight in each square foot and you'll have you know like I said four of these sections and there'll be 32 uh, peas put in the ground in this one section so that's how it goes and they'll go apart and I'll show you as we do it and um, we'll make the holes and then we use vermiculite the fine vermiculite you guys seen this stuff before you know what it is see that stuff we use that and what basically what we do is pour that once we make the holes we put the seeds in there pour some of this inoculant in the hole which I'll show you too you put it in there and then we put this over the hole we don't put dirt over the hole then we water it we cover it with plastic and it's April I think 27th today 2013 and this time last year we had these things in the ground the peas in the ground March 21st I believe in 2012 but the winter the, the, we still got snow all around the yard and everything else but it's it's been a um, even this ground was frozen we had the super put the pl white plastic over it to heat it up but as for soil mixture it just depends on what you want we use um, we revitalize it in the spring we put compost in it um, whatever it needs you know for fertilizer and everything else you do your checks that you're supposed to do to make sure your your nitrogen and your potassium and I mean and your um, uh, all your ingredients are right for you. It's 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 standard basic stuff. Just get a multi-mix fertilizer and you're good to go. 
and uh, we use just basic, uh, uh, we use, mainly use um, compost for fertilizer. We try to stay away from the uh, synthetics of fertilizers for obvious reasons. Okay, well, I'm not going to keep harping on this, and uh, we will start marking the holes and get going, and then uh, I'll show you step-by-step -step pieces how we do it. Okay, over and out. Okay, I figured I'd show you this basic. Basically, you can use these two fingers if you want, but it, I can't get them far enough apart, or just use your, however you want. It's not real critical. Just so you get, you see I already did eight here, two, four, six, eight, and you just keep them about that far apart, about three inches, three, three inches to four inches apart, and just start making your holes and try to keep them in the center. Go down about an inch. There's two, four, six, eight. That's as high as I can count. And what I do is I get some of these leaves out of the way, because you don't want them in the hole. And then just clean the holes up. And the good thing about doing this is that the holes ain't perfect. They don't look that, I mean, the little oblong, whatever. Um, then you just erase it like you're erasing a chalkboard and do it over again until you get the whole space just right. And that's basically what you do. See, we'll do it again right here. Right here's two, four, six, eight. Down about an inch. And clear your area up. Clean the holes up. It's not rocket science. It's just, just the way you do it. That's it. I'll do the last one. Two, four, six, eight. And then you notice there's no netting here. There's, there used to be netting here. You probably can't see it from where you're at. But I had that uh, nylon netting you buy. And it wiggles in the, it wiggle, blows in the wind when these things get tall. And what happens is when it blows in the wind, these plants move. And we found that the plant. Okay, unfortunately, the memory card was, it's a four gig memory card, and I ran out. I can't believe it. I must have been talking like crazy. But you can see I got the holes. Sorry for the shadow. I'm on the wrong side. But if I get on that side, I got that plastic in the way. But what I was saying is um, you use your two fingers, eight per section. You'll come out to 32 holes. Okay, and if you, if you do it wrong, like um, just fill them in and do space them all over again. And uh, these here are, are just, like I said, to give you an idea, you don't have to put these down. You could draw lines with your fingers in at one foot increments, you know, it depends. If they ain't perfect, it don't matter. It just gives you an idea where the, how you lay them out. With, it gives you some kind of reference point. And for laying the, the pea seeds, you can you split this in half, so it's 12 inches here, you, six inches, and you go right down the center. Because I'm gonna put a wire up here, a wire fence. So I'm getting rid of this nylon fence because we find out that once these plants get real tall, the wind catches them, blows them around, and it breaks the stems going off into the soil. It breaks them right off here because they keep wiggling back and forth in the wind because it's real windy in our garden. And um, um, we're sort of on, on a hill here, but uh, it wiggles and breaks them off. So we lose some. Some just break off and die because that's so. I'm putting a solid fence up, and I'm not using this nylon netting because uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't do the job of holding the plants um, solid. And uh, um, it doesn't it doesn't keep rigid, so the wind can't blow blow the heck out of them. So okay, now I'm gonna do the seeds. Like I told you before, I'm gonna drop one seed per hole. I'm confident each one will germinate, even though that usually doesn't always happen. But I'll do it anyhow. And then I'll take the inoculant from here and put it over the top. Maybe sprinkle some more inside. But I can show you a few here right now. Let's see, just real quick. I mean, right here, just take one out, put a hole. Take one out, put it all, get a little greedy here. One, 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 instead of one at a time. One, one. I'm not going to show you all this because, I mean, you obviously know how to do all this stuff. It's just for some people that don't know how to do this. And then I take some of the inoculant and drop it in, but I'll leave that inoculant for later. I'll take this stuff and I sprinkle a little bit in each hole. And don't worry, it's not going to burn them. You can load it in. Just put it, it really helps them, helps them out a lot. Okay, then when you get done with doing that, you make sure that the the seed is touching the soil down there. Push it down a little bit, make sure it's making contact with the earth. And then take some of your vermiculite I was telling you about and fill the holes in. 
just fill them in like this. Of course, it's a windy day. Like I said, we got a windy garden, and today, now that I'm using this light vermiculite, the wind has to really do its job on me. And then just spread it over the hole like this, like that, like that, real nice. And of course, this helps the soil out too once you work it in. I mean, there's no nutritive value with this stuff. It's, it's negative, but um, that, that's how you do it. You cover them up, and you do that on all these. And then, then it'll come back, and I'll water it. Usually, we use a two-gallon hand watering jug for bed because we've already watered this. We've already added four gallons of water, and um, um, we'll, so we'll add it one more, and then we'll pull the plastic over and leave the plastic over for them until they germinate. And when they start coming out of soil, then we'll pull the plastic off. So that's it for now. I'm going to finish this up, and then we'll go there. Over. Okay, there we go. Um, here's the final stage, well, sort of final, peas, 427. Just stick it in here, of course you probably can't see from where you're at. Got to go a little low because I'm going to put the plastic on here. And now my wife here will water it. She'll just water it lightly with a two gallon jug. Lift up a little higher, look, there you go. Higher, go higher in the air like raindrops, there you go. Keep moving it now. There you go. Yeah, you got to want to be easy because the vermiculite will want to float out of the out of the holes. Once it gets wet, it'll lock in. But until you do it, you might have to stop watering a little bit in between to let it catch up. But that's basically it. Just water it and soak with, soak in the peas overnight. Really helps because that. Because it takes, uh, it'll take a long time for the soil to uh, have enough moisture to soil for the, the peas to actually get, you know, swell up. So you soak them overnight, like they all recommend, and uh, you'll be good to go. They'll they'll have that much head start on you. And I'll come out and check it every three, four days to see if it needs water. But we're supposed to get rain. Of course, it ain't really going to make a difference anyhow because we have plastic over the top of it. And when she's done here, I'll uh, put the plastic um, over the top of the thing here so but that's good enough you've seen watering okay here we are the final stage I'm gonna put the plastic over okay you can hand me the plastic here it's already attached on that side I think unless the wind blew it off it's our own invention here with the plastic with clothes pins on the square foot garden you just tuck that over like that close pin it down the wind does not blow it up not yet knock on wood and that's it. That bed is done. And the clothespins are good on that side too there. They're mm -hmm. sticking straight out good. And we just do that all the way down. And uh, let's see, I'll, maybe I'll, I'll move this thing here for a second here. Let's see. Here we go. I'll turn this. Sorry for the vibration, but you can see, if you look down here, you can see we're going to do five beds. See? Just five beds is all we're going to do. And then I've got four beds left, and we'll do them in about two weeks so we don't have 15,000 uh, sugar snap peas coming in all at once. So that's what we'll do. So we'll just do it, repeat the same thing all the way down. And once again, you don't need them white lines. We just do it just because, I don't know, you ain't got nothing better to do. <laughs> okay. Thank you for watching. And uh, that's it. That's how to plant sugar snap peas in your square foot garden. It's pretty simple. And uh, that's it. Okay. We are done. It's one, two, three, four, five, five beds. I know they're all covered, but we only did five of these four-foot sections here. And you can see the uh, nylon net I was telling you about. We're getting rid of that. That just it's not stable enough for the plants. They blow and break. But there, we're done. It took about a, about an hour. And so I'm gonna put all the stuff away now. According to our weatherman, we're gonna get five days of rain. But if you look in the yard, you can see snow. Still snow. Still snow in the yard. Yeah, uh, winter was long, long a leaving here, but we're done now. That's it. And uh, we have four or five four-foot boxes with 32 seeds per box, which is about what 100. And, let's see if I can do this right. 150, at least 150 seeds, give or take. You do the math. So 100, over 150 plants here, and then we'll have four boxes left, which we'll plant in about two weeks or so, two or three weeks. Depend on how these things are coming up. And we'll do it by that. So that's it. 
uh, thank you for watching. Hope this helps you out a little bit. Our humble garden. We're slowly getting it going. Another season.